This time on The Cheetah Diaries. Is legend on the road to recovery. So I've just come over today to have a check of legend, and this is the day after her surgery. Is this the end of the Fox family feud? They're at the age now where obviously they're starting to become adults and they're challenging dad. And Cheetah Cub Yell is rushed to the vet. Of course, these things all happen in a flash. The Cheetah Outreach team have been in shock. Serval Kitten legend lost a leg in a fence line accident. She survived and she's coming home soon. Zenzo is building her a safe recovery space. Part of my job, I do the maintenance. I feel proud of doing something for the animals. I'm going to build a small enclosure right in the corner for the injured server so that if she comes back, she must be on her own, not running around with the others, so that she can recover, not running around with the sore leg. We're um, taking the kitten now to the vet. Obviously, everybody's in a real state of shock about this um, horrible, horrible thing to have happened. She had lost the lower part of her leg and the upper part had been shredded probably from by another animal and the only option was then to amputate her, her front leg which we did immediately and from her shoulder down she has nothing left. So we're just taking her indoors to settle her in a room where she can be on her own and um, with as little stimulation as possible. We're obviously all absolutely devastated and the main focus now is just to make sure she comes through this okay. Yeah, it's against this little baby, so it's certainly not easy. I feel sad because I love, I love the animals, so I feel like maybe I was supposed to do something before that happened. But I didn't realize that the jackals can try to dig underneath this uh, thick fence. But now we have already put the, uh, the fingerproof fence on the other side, and this side is a um, shed cloth, so they can't manage to put their legs through. I think Legend is coming this afternoon to his new home. They've been uh, at Lizel's house trying to recover there, the is coming back to the family. So that's why we're working hard, we're trying to finish this before she comes back this afternoon. It's time for the final Fox family meal. Today batted Fox pups, Batman, Foxtrot and Foxtail are leaving parents Brad and Janet for their new home. Although Yogi and Lester will miss them, they're relieved the frenzied feeding times will finally come to an end. Let's go and do the last wild meal. They, uh, it's quite a mission to feed the five of them because they're very food possessive and they argue quite a bit. Meal times have always been a battle for the staff. The boys wreaked havoc, fighting with each other, stealing food and attacking their parents. So craziness starts with the last time. Nice <laughs> we have we have some flying foxes here. Can you come this way too? There you go. There's Brad. One more. One more. One more. One more. There you go. Luckily, there's enough food for all of them. So if they do go between the bowls. Who is that? Is that Brad? Keep running everywhere. <laughs> Oh. 
They're at the age now where obviously they're starting to become adults and they're challenging dad. And we have a suspicion, Janet, the mother has started to come in season, which of course makes the aggression much worse. Um, so that's why we've been really having some fairly bad fights between them and father. So it's really, it is time for them to go. And although it was heartbreaking for me, I've, I've made my peace with it that it is necessary. Okay, I'll well, just, I think maybe I'll grab one at a time and you just shut the gate as soon as I've got them in. I'm gonna leave this, this one gate open, and then. that. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, no, that's fine. For now and see how that goes. There you go. That's one of them. That's bad. Okay. One down. One Two down. Okay. If we can get him into this area here somehow, then it's easier to load him. Yeah. Come here. Your These are going to go near them. But the third is giving Lester the runaround. There, there we go, that's where we want it. Are you sure it's the right one? Yeah. Quickly, open. Yeah. Okay. Finally crated and ready to go. You're going to have this whole enclosure to yourselves, my girls and boys. Their new home is five hours' drive from Cape Town. And the weather looks ominous. Oh, hey! It's a bit of a rainy day, so good luck on the road to oh, drive thank safe. Thank you. These are my babies. I hand-raised them, so... I actually asked if I could take them so I could see where they're going and make sure they're going to be all right. With Lester finally on the road, let's hope the boys behave on the journey. are reluctant to go outside. Maybe it's those storm clouds on the horizon. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. We got the cubs out in the garden this morning and we just moved on to having them all out for the whole day. So yesterday was the first day they didn't go in at all. The cubs have all been playing this morning, but not their usual charging around. So I think this would be a good idea, a good time to introduce the lure, see if we can get them a bit more motivated. The idea behind the lure is we want to encourage their chasing behaviour, get them to focus on a moving object, as they would do in the wild if they were hunting down their prey. See if we can get them doing some nice speeds, turns, that kind of thing. All of this helps their balance. At the moment when they're developing, their muscles are developing, their bones are strengthening. It's really good to get as much exercise as you can into them so that it, it helps them develop properly. And obviously their turning skills and things like that. We try and take it fairly slow at the beginning to make sure they're not too frightened of it. Um, <laughs> but sometimes they don't help with that. Hey Brock, you getting yourself all chased up in it? All tangled. You, my boy. So it's looking like it might rain soon. We might get them in in a minute um, if it starts to pour down. Our mountain's covered with mist, so usually means the rain's on its way. While the rain pours, a vigilant Mandy keeps an eye on the cats. The move's been hectic, um, but yeah, oh, it's exciting to be here. And nice to get the cats and the animals settled in before the public come. Um, so they're getting used to, to their environment now without any people being here or any public being here, which is really great. So I'm going to go up to the platform now and just um, have a look. And just now I can see all the animals from the top of the platform and just check on them all and see if I need to go in with any of them. Shobi is at the moment the only sensible cheetah that's in his hut keeping nice and warm and dry. The others are still watching everything that's happening and checking out their new environment. Yeah, yeah. really awful up here. Oh, what a miserable weather. 
goodness. But the rain's not the only thing to slow down progress for Lester and the boys. Lester has left some vital paperwork back in Cape Town. We needed to have uh, permits from Cape Nature to be allowed to move them, you know, to transport them being wild animals. And um, so I dare say if we don't, if we stop them, whatever, if we don't have the papers, then there'll be problems. Rather than turn back, a helpful volunteer is coming to her rescue. Lester and the boys will just have to be patient. We really need to get going. Sure, it's a long way to go yet. We hardly left still in uh, Somerset West. I hope she gets here soon, and with this weather, it's probably not a quick journey anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, my saviour. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Jessie. Here we go. Thanks, Jets. That's um, all, eh? That's super. And you came your own part, too. Thank you so much. I don't even know what all this is, but... Uh, you are, need it, apparently. Yes, yeah, I need... I do need it. Thank you. That's why we had to wait. Thanks so much, please. <laughs> Safe journey. <laughs> and I hope you survive this cold wet day. Vital permits in hand. It's back on the road for Lester and the Fox Pups. At Liesel's house, legend the serval is still recuperating, and Emily has dropped by to visit her patient. Legend. So I've just come over today to have a check of legend, and this is the day after her surgery. Um, Liesel's been with her all night and said she's had quite a comfortable night. And the main concern would be infection, especially because it was such a dirty wound. I haven't seen the wound as yet because she's sitting um, with the, the affected leg away from me. I'd like to have a look at the actual wound itself and see what that looks like, but I don't want to disturb her too much. She's obviously protecting that area by keeping that to the back of the box, which is absolutely normal. And especially with wild animals, you know, they would always try and hide any issue that they had with them in case other predators would see something was wrong. So that is behaviour that I would expect, because looking from this angle, she looks completely normal. Apparently, Liesel said that she hasn't come out of the crate yet since we brought her back yesterday. But I'm not concerned by that and, in fact, not at all surprised. She's in a new surroundings. Um, she's used to being with her mum and her sister. They are not here. And the, the crate is a nice protected environment. It's a little bit darker. And she's obviously feeling nice and safe in there. She's just turned round for us, which is perfect. I haven't had to move her at all or disturb her in the crate. And I've had a really, really nice look at her wound there. Obviously, at the moment, we're just having 24-hour care for her, making sure that we're monitoring her, that she's comfortable. Really, at the moment, it's a kind of day-by-day -day thing. Oh, no, Lester finally arrives at the fox's new home. So the trip was fine. It was a bit stressful. I'm very, very glad to be here. But they were very good. They were very, very well behaved. Slept most of the way, so that's a total pleasure. Hi. Hi. Yes, hi. hi nice, nice, nice to meet you. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're going to look after my baby. Yes, I am and right. I'm very excited to have them here with us. I believe they're quite a handful. They can be, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, they are lovely. They are the most adorable things in the whole universe. They look more beautiful. Just watch your step, it's quite slippery when it's wet. Moi an Fatna.
and then we can go around yes, and enter the camp. Yes, I'd like to be there before yes. they let them Oh, yeah, no, finish, you'll be the please. one <laughs> letting them go. I'm thrilled with this enclosure. It's so nice. Lovely. Yeah. They're going to be so happy here. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right, Daddy. He was my baby, this one. Mm -hmm. What's under? There's a bit of a hole under the fence there, is that? Ah, no, it's, it's rocks on the other side. Is that OK? okay. And finally, Lester must say her goodbyes. Come, darling. Come on, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Come, darling. Where's my Daddy? Where's my Trotty? Where's my little Trotty? Where's my brothers? If I have to break my way in, I will come and visit you. Mm hmm? My precious babies. Oh, you can come and visit any time. Oh. Maybe I'll come every weekend. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're not that far. <laughs> These feisty boys will do just fine. It's Lester who needs some time to adjust. I'm sad. But at least they're close enough that I can come and visit them. And, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that they've got such a nice place. Really, really good. Very good indeed. Love it. I want to build it. Back in Cape Town, Emily's crazy day continues. She's off to see problem patient Choby. A few weeks ago, Choby started gnawing on his tail. Then his behavior turned compulsive and he chewed through to the bone, resulting in an emergency amputation. I still monitor Choby quite a bit and it doesn't seem like he's paid much attention to his tail. Okay. Not that we've seen at least. Uh, obviously it's been rainy and stormy, so mm. we had people just keeping an eye on him, but he's been in his heart most of the time, so it's a little bit difficult seeing him all the time yeah. without going inside and disturbing him. So yeah. fingers double-crossed, yeah. thumbs held, <laughs> legs crossed, I don't know what else we want to do, but just to be sure. Today, Emily wants to remove Choby's stitches. We're now seeing a few of the underlying stitches coming out, these real purple ones here. Yeah. So they're from the layer underneath the skin. So I'm not going to touch them, they're absorbable sutures. Mm -hmm. So they last for six weeks and they just dissolve and they're absorbed into the body. So I'm going to leave them alone. What we're going to take out is these nylon stitches okay. here because they won't ever dissolve. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that we're attaching the skin together. And in fact, are you able to tail? hold his tail? Yeah, yeah that'd be a great help. We've got another hand. Good boy. So Brilliant. should we put some citronella on? Yeah, quickly? let's do that. I think he'll be okay now these skin ones are out. That mm. should reduce the irritation and hopefully he'll leave it alone. Perfect. While Emily was tending to Choby, little cub Yell has suffered an injury. So it's back on the road and off to the vet. It seems that Yell has damaged his teeth. Of course, these things all happen in a flash, but I think he was obviously biting on the fence, got the fright, pulled back, and his canine teeth have been fractured. So the one on the right-hand side is still attached to the gum. So there's two big shards of tooth kind of flapping around in the breeze. The left-hand one, a big chunk of it is already gone. There's just a little shard there. These are obviously just his milk teeth, his baby teeth, so it's not going to affect him long term, but it is painful for him at the moment. So he's going to need both those root remnants extracted yeah. because we can't leave them there because they've, they've got exposed nerves, but also if we leave them, they'll become infected and they'll affect the, the developing tooth underneath yeah. them, and that's just going to cause him a problem, so yeah. it's better to extract them. Yeah.
we'll create a gum flap. Yeah. So move the gum out of the way, take the bone away over the surface of the deciduous root, mm -hmm. and then cut it loose and, and extract it okay. and, and do as little damage as possible to the secondary mm -hmm. tooth. Quite a lot of shattered fragments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are right up in the gum. They've managed to get all the fragments out very well and the gums have been sutured now, so I think um, all should be well. He's done, he's done really good. We'll just continue with the med camp for two days. Two days. Okay. Per Oz. Per Oz, okay. Yes. So today and tomorrow, yep. and then that should be sufficient. Okay. Yell has come through his surgery just fine and is now waking up. Much like humans, animals can be disorientated after anaesthetic. It's all right. I thought we should have taken it a bit earlier, really. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. Emily works quickly to calm Yell down. Can you unhook him from my jumper? Can you unhook him? All right, my boy. Okay. All right, my boy. Should we get you home? Get you warm? Something to eat? For Cub Yell, the worst is over and it's off to the cup house to recover. For Emily, it's one last stop. Serval kitten legend was on the road to recovery, but she took a turn for the worst and sadly did not pull through. Hopefully, Liesl has some happy memories to look back on. Try and pin down the prey animal. Next time on The Cheetah Diaries, how will Yell manage without his two front teeth? I'm just going to have a look at Yell's gums. Zaza falls seriously ill. We've just gone through a patch now with her where she displayed very poor appetite for about a week or so. Annie visits guard dog Choby. He's blended right in with that herd. Mum's the word for bat-eared fox Janet. They'll be very small at this stage. They'll be literally like marble size. It's a home makeover for the meerkats. And I don't know if they're looking forward to as much as we are. We can't wait. And Ambassador Joseph. And now we need to beat the bride to the wedding. Will he leave the bride waiting at the altar?